Hey there, I'm Lily O'Reilly. This is Lily O'Reilly Reviews. And today I'm actually tackling a custom that was sent to me via Ko-Fi. So let's get to it, huh? Okay, so I recently got a request through my Ko-Fi commission system to make a video that shows how custom videos are made and what goes into them and all of that. So, oh, let's talk about that, huh? So, as y'all might know, I and a lot of other independent content creators out there make custom videos. The way that works, generally speaking, for me, I can't speak for everyone, but like my process, <clears throat> you would send me an email saying, I want you to sit on the bed barefoot, be mean to me about the fact that I like feet. It's one that I'm going to use later as an example. And I go, okay, do you have outfit requests? How long of a video do you want this to be? Is there anything I need to know? Do you want me to use your name? You know, all the important details. Get the info back. Let's say, oh, well, it's a five minute video. I don't have any special clothing requests, but I don't really want you to wear purple. And no, I don't need you to use my name. Okay, perfect. Then I give you the price quote. Oh, well, it's X dollars a minute. My minimum is three minutes. Since you want like five minutes, that's perfect. You need to pay me now. They pay me via something that isn't PayPal because <clears throat> PayPal, Venmo, Circle Pay, any of those, those are not sex worker friendly. And if you are a sex worker and you're watching this, it's literally just a fucking waiting game. They will eventually figure out the, what you do and they will lock your accounts and then you will no longer be able to receive money. In the case of PayPal, if they lock your account, that money is just like gone. There's no way for you to get it back. There's theoretically an arbitration process, but I don't know anyone that's actually managed to get the money out of their account. So you pay via something like the Minivids tip function. There's a tip function on clips for sale. There's Indie Bill, which I preferentially use. There's a lot of different sites you can use to accept your money for a custom. Perfect. Now you have to make the custom. So here's my process. I usually film about one day a week because there's a sh lot of admin shit that takes up the rest of the week. So let's say every Tuesday I film. On Tuesdays, I sit down with my laptop, I go through, I write down every single paid for custom that I can find in my inbox that has happened since the last time I filmed. I go through and I message anyone that I've been talking to who hasn't paid me yet. And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna film. Do you wanna pay me? I'll make your porn. Mm -hmm. Some of those get back, some of them don't. But end result, I have a whole list of customs. So I pack up, I go over to my studio, and then I've got this massive dry erase board. I take that dry erase board with my handy marker and I list every single paid for custom that I need to film all the way down the dry erase board. Then I go through and I number them in order of how I want to film them. There's kind of a logic to it. Like I've got one where he wants me to oil my soles at the end of it. That will be the last film of that day because once you get your feet all greasy, you can't like get them to look dry again easily. Or if I have something that's messy or something that's like high energy, I'm going to put it toward the end of the queue. But I could do like a, a CEI or a come eating instruction. I could do a JOI or a jack off instruction. Anything that is mostly verbal talking, I'll do all of those in one big run, like just one after another, because when I start talking, I get into the flow. And then the things that are more physical, I'll do all together pretty much back to back because it's similar. You get into that flow where you're like, okay, I'll do this and then I'll do that and then I'll do the next one. When you line it up right, you can get really productive because you figure out the way of making the way of ordering clips that works for you and you can hit the ground running. 
So I've got my topics planned out. I've made sure I have everything I need for my topics. This is all very good. Step three, get naked. Because things like, like bras, anything that has straps, is going to leave press marks against your skin. Those red marks where you take your clothes off. And you don't want those marks showing up in your videos. So you go, you take off everything that you're wearing, and you put on something that will not leave a mark. For me, I'm usually either wearing a robe or a kigurumi. I've got some like muumuu dresses that I can just throw on. Something that won't leave any marks while I wait for my white ass skin to like get with the program. Step four, because I'm a goddamn trash panda, is almost always clean where I'm filming. My cam room, generally I film on what's essentially a day bed. But the problem is I'm in and out of my studio so often dropping things off, picking things up, taking them to shoots, etc., etc. I don't clean. I'm bad about it. I've organized my life in piles. So I'll take 20, 30 minutes and I will go in and I will just clean off the whole day bed. I'll change the sheets. I'll put new things on. I get it tidy and ready to go so that I have a fresh workstation. And usually that winds up with a bunch of extra cleaning as well because it just makes sense. But yeah, clean the place we're filming because nothing makes a custom shittier than like a pile of laundry in the background or a random toy that you didn't know about or like a handprint on the wall. Maybe I'm just anal retentive. I really want that shit to be clean. Let's see, five, five is makeup. I like to save this to almost last because I hate makeup. So if I put it on at the last possible minute, it's less likely I'll fuck it up. I usually don't do a lot of makeup, A, because I'm not super good at it, and B, because eh, my skin's good enough I can get away with it. Like, I'm not wearing anything right now. And it's just, I got lucky, good genetics. I don't wear it if I don't have to. But for filming, because I film in 4K, it's usually mascara, eyeliner, some kind of lip color, foundation, and then blush, something blush-ish. Because with how pale I am, even though I have cheekbones, you still kind of have to like shadow it in and carve shit out, or the camera flattens it out and you can't see it. Oh, let's see. Makeup on, and then you put on your clothes for the shoot. For the first video in the shoot. If you're really planning things out, you'll actually be like, okay, this one's going to cause the most marks. I'll do it last. I never think that far in advance, so I usually just put on whatever set of clothes goes first. For the foot fetish video I was talking about earlier, he wanted super casual, very little makeup. So I think I'm wearing like a hoodie and some tights, like nothing exciting. Then you set up your lighting rig. I'm lucky in that I usually film daylight. I don't have to do soft boxes and fill panels and all of that. I usually just pop up a ring light and I put my camera in front of it and I do super, super chill lighting. It's easier. I've seen girls that have six to eight lights on set though and that shit's amazing. I just, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. it. It's too bright and it's unpleasant, but whatever works. Oh God. And then, okay, then we film the video and you guys are... I know the foot fetishists are going to love this because I've got a little clip of like me being on the bed, wiggling my feet. Very exciting. But that's what you do. Ideally for me, I try to film the whole video in one take. If that doesn't work. So one useful tip is if let's say you have a blooper, like you, I don't know, you drop your dildo or something and it's not a super smooth thing that you can just edit right out. Change your camera angle. It's harder for somebody to figure out, like it, it tweaks something in your brain's ability to recognize continuity when you go from like a straight on shot to a 45 shot, to a 45. Fuck it, it's easier on my end of this thing. So if let's say you need to cut because you need to change positions and you can't do it fluidly, go from like a low shot to maybe a high shot or a low to a 45 low or something like that so that they can't see as clearly that you edited it. One mistake I made when I was new 
was I really abused the transitions feature where every single time I cut between scenes, there was a blur or a fade or a flash. And that shit gets old real fast. Like, if you look at the movies, they don't do that. Like, just cut between your scenes. We know what's going on. I say to myself more so than anyone else. Then, videos filmed. All the videos are filmed. Filmed as many videos as I could. Pack up my camera and go home. We transfer the files. We... Oh, this takes forever. Like, even on a good computer, it takes forever. You take your little SD card out, plug it into the computer, put everything into the right folders. I organize my folders by year, month, co-stars if I have any, custom if it's a custom so I can find it later, and then working title. That's my whole folder name. In that folder, I put raw files. When I build the actual clip, it's raw file, preview file, GIF, and description. Those all go in the folder and the whole folder gets moved into the archive when it's published. And that brings me to the next one. Once your files are transferred in, then you edit them. I use Wondershare Filmora 9. It's a really good program. It's basic, like you're not gonna be doing super advanced green screen. It doesn't do a lot of like skin smoothing or fancy shit, but if you wanna put multiple clips together and make them go together and make it look good, Filmora is fine. And editing for me is generally, I denoise the audio if it needs cleared up. I'll boost or reduce the audio to make it sound good. Edit out any small bloopers. For something like YouTube, I add in my titles and my transitions. If it's something that's more of just a clip for sale, like the foot clip was, I will then fix the noise fix the audio, put my watermark on, put my panel at the end, put one transition to dissolve it into my end panel. That's it, like it's done. Then you export it, which takes fucking forever. Oh my God, maybe my computer's just slow. But then once your file's exported, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be like, I'm shooting in 4K. So a video that's like five minutes long, we're looking upwards of five gigs. So then you run it through Handbrake, which is another program which you can use, which I believe is free. Filmora you have to pay for, but Handbrake is free. And you just compress it and it'll take a file from five gig to like one. Makes it way easier to upload and transfer and all that shit. And yeah, then I upload it. Then like eventually profit maybe, I don't know. So I think that hit all the markers, I think. Customs are a lot more complicated than people think they are. We don't just magically shit them out fully formed. There's thought and planning and work and work and work and work that goes into making them. So hopefully if you were curious about how all this goes together, that answered some questions for you as well. And spiel. Um, if you wanna find me on the internet, allmylinks.com slash Lily O'Reilly. I'm there. You can follow me on Snapchat at Lilibund. I'm there. You can support me on Ko-Fi or commission your own video like this. There. And past that, yeah. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you enjoy seeing the shit that I bring to the table. And yeah, till next time. <laughs>